Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Friday, August 10th, and we are already on the European account, but we did get stymied a little bit because I'm going to have to win three tavern brawls, so, and these tavern brawls are incredibly slow, so let's jump into one of those, and then we'll play a pirate deck that I built at the end of the last recording, and that way we can have this recording a little bit broken up. Uh, we don't have a ton of news, but I've said that before, and then it's still taking me really long, so I want to just start burning through the news. Uh, we've got a game on a steam called Awakening colon Moonfell Wood. It says it's an adventure casual game. It looks like, to me, it is a hidden object adventure game. It is from our friends Big Fish, Big Fish Game. I don't know why I keep calling them our friends. I need to stop doing that. That's that's misleading. That's a misleading joke. Uh, the thing I will point out about this hidden object game is that it's only nine dollars and ninety nine cents. It's apparently part of a fifty six dollar and sixty four cents Awakening collection. So. Uh, yeah, I guess if I was going to continue to do hidden object games, which is questionable, if I should, I should probably do this series. Um, and since it is a series of hidden object games that I think are set in kind of a fantasy world, uh, and apparently there's a character named Sophia. And she's exploring a magical land, and and yeah, the idea of of covering the same same story in hidden object games makes more sense than playing games that are just random and crazy. Moving on, Gametsu has an article: Rage 2 Eden Assault Extended Gameplay Feature. I guess the ex feature in this case would be a your gamer's way, a European way of saying video. Uh, so, let me back up this video. I actually just want to watch this entire video. Um, hmm. The thing here, where I'm in this weird position, is uh, I have Rage 1. I don't really have time to play it. I have Mad Max, which Rage 2 basically was going to be the continuation of Mad Max, and I don't have play time to play that. And I do have a desire to play both of those games, but I've got to pick one of them and play them first before I get to Rage 2. So uh, that's a real barrier. In comparison, if I was to... Uh, say, well, Borderlands 3 came out yesterday, let's say it did, uh, I have no real need in, in my heart to play Borderlands a pre-sequel. I can play that later um, and, and do a retrospective comparison. Like, I could skip that. I could probably even justify skipping the rest of Borderlands 2. Uh, and, and just moving on to Borderlands 3 if it were to come out in some kind of surprise release. Let's see. Ah, uh, the great outdoors. Let's see. Do I want to hold on to this coin? I don't know. Uh, but for Prey, Prey, not Prey, um, Rage, Rage 2, I don't think I'm, I'm willing to do that. Uh, looking at the trailer, we, we're seeing still a lot of colorful punk people, which almost certainly, I think at some point somebody's going to make a mod that ta takes the hair off of these punk people and just makes them all bald. And it will look more more in line and honestly I think the colorful hair punk people probably are only in one small part of the game uh, 
if, if I was the guest, it, you're going to get in the very first section of the game and, and that's it. Here I, I see now the trailer is showing off for Rage 2 some racing sections, driving in cars. I, I didn't understand why that was added to Borderlands 1 and 2. I, I still don't understand why it's added. Uh, in this game, no. uh, it's Trust. it's the equivalent to having a horse in Witcher 3. Um, I don't recall actually ever using the horse because they they're just not worth it. This in Rage 2, this looks like this is much fast paced and it's more about doing combat on the road than it is just being a item that you're going to use to uh, forever improve upon your. Um, the, your transitioning speed. Like two. I need something. This. this. And this. And then play this. And then play this. Get your funnel cakes here! And in the time training, waits for no one. Uh, so four minutes into the seven and a half minute trailer, now it's starting to show me a fight sequence that looks exactly like the fight sequence from the E3 trailer. So, I mean, how finished is Thank Rage you. 2 then? If they're showing us the same fight sequence. I guess maybe they're just not interested in showing off the fight section again. That could be the case. I could spend one mana if I can get rid of something. Trouble? Just gotta get rid of something here. <sighs> And trust me. There. That was the start of that. And in return. So yeah, I'm still seeing basically what looks like the same fight sequence, which was this homage like heavily edited fight sequence where you're uh, you're breaking into like a, a facility and from what I understand is you break into this facility and it becomes your kind of your your base Couple guys gone. Pay up. Okay. Play this. Refresh my mana crystal. Play this. And if I play this guess I could have played that too hmm. waits for no one. Okay. um you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and then in the turn So, yeah, it says Spring 2019 is when Rage 2 is coming out. It seems like it, that was only slightly an expanded trailer. Uh, nothing really hyping me more for Rage 2 
by the time it actually comes out, I will be very possibly, or at least I very possibly am just gonna have moved on to the next thing. Right. Destroy a random party crash. If I do two of these, that won't do anything. Deal three to the pinata. Yeah, that didn't do anything. Let's go and kill this. got a game on Steam that looks like MS Paint graphics called Curiosity. It's free to play, so I guess the price is right at least, but I don't really even have anything else to say about it. Uh, it says it's a game where you can hack. I don't see anything here. Like, oh, I get it now. It's not a game at all. It's just, like, program this MS Paint character through programming make the game yourself yeah no thank you Let's see I need to basically shuffle three of these hmm. so Where's my cat? Hmm. Let's see this is what I wanted to do if I do this I can kill this. This my cat and I don't have enough map. Then this 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 Where's my cat? This So the next game we have on uh, Steam is called Board Battlefield, B-O-A-R-D. So it's a quick and action yeah, dice-based battles for players looking for something more than guesswork of Battleship, but not the complexity of chess. Mm. Oh, the, it looks like a Windows 95 game where you're playing as military figures on a chess grid. And I guess it's just dice rolls that determine who wins or who not. Uh, wouldn't that be risk? This real, yeah, I think this is pretty much just a risk claim, or somewhat similar to your risk. So I've got to be a little careful to not kill myself, but I also have to be careful to get some of these off the field. There we go. Uh, board Battlefield is 15% off for $1.69. Um, of course, any game like this then comes immediately with the suggestion of spending $20 at full price for Tabletop Simulator or getting it on when it's on sale. This isn't terribly a terrible looking concept or game, it's just not polished enough for 2018 standards. Like if, they, if this had come out in the 90s and it was super popular in the 90s, maybe then I would consider it. 
seems like the pinata randomly gives you items. Uh, Where's my cat? Think we can win here. So let's just take the victory because this is we gotta do this one more time and this is incredibly slow. Next we have a game called Blade Quest, the first chapter of gold. Um, is they say it's a short, highly atmospheric first person game experience, inspired by games like the Elder Scrolls, Five Skyrim, or the Gothic series. Um, I wonder if somewhere in the rules of listing a game on Steam, are you not allowed to, to mention other games? Uh, it doesn't happen a lot, certainly, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's forbidden either. Probably should be forbidden. Uh, what this game really is, is it looks like it's a 3D um, low polygon dungeon crawler game. And so, yeah, Skyrim was a significant portion of it was wandering around dark dungeons and fighting draugers. In this case, you're fighting skeletons. Uh, but I don't think there's any kind of story or anything. For the most part, this looks like an asset flip game. It has a third party EULA for no reason. It's 10% off for $7.19. And the fact that they say it's the first chapter means they're breaking up the game, uh, which I don't find acceptable. And uh, gold edition is something that hasn't been used as a descriptor in probably a decade. Like gold used to mean, oh, this is the third, uh, second printing, not not third printing, but like second printing of a game, or it may have been the third printing, like say you did you made the original version you, you made enough demand and enough sales to make a second printing of the, the first edition and then by the time you got around to that third printing a year's probably happened and it's time to call it a game of the year edition uh inherently that is what game of the year edition is so the concept hasn't been uh changed as much as just the the name has been changed uh, next game we have on Steam is called NetHack Legacy it says NetHack Legacy is a remastered version of the original NetHack a deeply rich and complex fantasy Dungeons and Dragons rogue like uh, hack and slash your way through once uh, dragons and cockatrices as we explore the perilous mazes of Mania Minus Minus and seeking the amulet of Yendor. Uh, this is from a company called Frozen Crate LLC, which so has released much. one other game that never got reviewed called Degauze, which in itself looks like a very low graphical game. Now NetHack was a no graphics ASCII text game. That's what it always was and was designed to be. Uh, so I can't really complain about, about it being low graphics. What I'm considering here is, is NetHack something that is unlicensable, uncopyrightable because it's so old and it's just in the public domain. That's why they're making this. Um, I also have to wonder what they've really remastered because this still is just ASCII text. It feels like you could probably get a very simplistic emulator to run that hack. In fact, I was going to, uh, to probably program my Arduino Uno R3 to run something like that hack. Uh, which is like a 16 megahertz computer uh, microcontroller. It's not really even a computer. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do? Let's just play this. Hmm. A tango? Yeah, I don't see anything changed here. 
And it's a roguelike game, meaning when you die, everything starts over again. It has Steam Cloud, which kind of means nothing. Uh, because I don't think there's much of a save file. Let's see. It says, play the illustrious ASCII interface uh, without having to endlessly tweak terminal settings and con config files. Beautiful look and feel out of the box. Uh, experience the warm glow and feel of an old CRT monitor. So they put, they, they're putting a visual filter over it to, to make it look like a, a cathode ray tube monitor, CRT monitor. Hey, uh, give me a minute. Which, okay. It says replay system, rewatch previously played games with a fully integrated replay system allowing real time playback, rewind fast forward to jumping. This is all stuff that you probably could get in a Lieb Retro uh, uh, core. Hello. I'm Hello. Hello. fairly certain you could, you could do all of this by default in like Retro Arc. Um, Full game manual, okay, so it comes with a manual made by Frozen Crate LLC. Let's see. Uh, in comparison, if you wanted to play something like this and have actual graphics, Steam is suggesting Dungeons of the Endless, or Delver, or Dungeon Souls, or Unexplored, or Princess Loot Pixel Again 2X. Or Heroes of Hammerwatch, or Dungeon Gitris, Dungeon Princess Loot Pixel again, Dis This Hard Dungeon, Necropolis Brutal Edition, uh, Rezog, and Versailles 2. And uh, so there's like a lot of other things you could could be playing with better graphics. And instead, you're opting to play just the old Here graphical versions of NetApp. The first review on Steam is not recommended. We don't read reviews too often these days. It says, I truly believe NetApp is the greatest game of all time. I feel so strong about it that I'm that it's almost a religious experience for me. With that being said, I hate the thought of middle people making money from something that has always been free. If you're going to charge me for NetHack, then you better be mind-blowingly good with tons of quality of life upgrades and the like. Net, NetHack Legacy is a cash grab as far as I'm concerned. Yes, it's nice to have it on Steam, but that's about where the praise ends. The only thing it really added to the game is some silly graphics options that I immediately wanted to turn off. I shared a screenshot of them for anyone interested. Uh, they are mostly one-trick pony filters and gimmicks. If I sound upset about this paid version of this game, uh, it is because I am. Insult to injury, as the release we currently ha have has no Steam achievements or leaderboards. Come on, this is standard stuff. Well, they, they are limiting definitely ha who can have Steam achievements. Hey, and give me a minute. And, but there should be some. You can, you can have like five. And you, you could have had some steam achievements. All I need to do is play pirates right now. Hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know why you would want to buy a NetHack. If you want to buy anything, there's this game called Brute at L, so it's brutal with the at sign. It is the concept of ASCII key arts and NetHack in a 3D environment uh, with th all the benefits of motion and, in a, and moving in a 3D environment. Uh, but yeah, unless you're programming to an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi with a very limited screen that just cannot depict a lot, 
I don't think people who have no nostalgia for NetHack should play NetHack. I, I would argue that even the people who do have nostalgia for NetHack games should potentially start to to wind that down and move on to something else because it, it's been a long time and it's just I think time to move on. I'm gonna lose, but that's alright. I didn't need to win. So yeah, I'm not gonna wishlist NetHack Legacy. I am, but I can, you know what? Just type in NetHack. Like, first thing on YouTube that says NetHack that is takes me to nethack.org and there's a Windows beta binary and a Mac OS beta binary. Current version is 3.6.1. Um, so, yeah. So this is a game that you could have, you can just download you, if you want it. You, you, no reason to buy it and put it on Steam. No reason at all. Um, let's see. I don't even let's see if I can zoom in the screen. I played the six pirates. That's all I needed to do. So that daily quest was. I may have lost, but I still achieved my goal. Back now, sadly, to the tavern brawl. Like, there's source listed here, source code for NetHack. It says, NetHack is copyright from 1985 to 2016 by Stitching Mathematisch Centurium and M. Stevenson. See our licenses for details. This site is copyrighted by Kenneth. Lower Bar, Kensington, Maryland, uh, from 1999 to 2018. Alright. The uh, NetHack General Public License, based on the Bison General Public License, everyone is permitted to copy, distribute verbatim copies of this license, but it, not changing it is not allowed. You can also you can also use this wording to make terms for other programs. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Uh, the next paragraph says this, the license of most software companies keep you at the mercy of these companies. By contrast, our general public license is intended to give everyone the right to share NetHack. Make sure that you get the rights uh, we want you to have. We need to make restrictions that forbid anyone to deny these rights to or ask you to surrender the rights, hence the license agreement. Specifically, we want to make sure that you have the rights to give away copies of NetHack and that you receive source code or, or else can get it if you want it. That you can change NetHack or use pieces in new free programs, uh, free being a term that has become under some contention in the open source community uh, they mean really really free like you get source code and everything and you can change it and continue to change it uh, not somebody saying this game is free but you have to agree to our license and you can't change it or copy it And that you know you can do these things. To make sure that everyone has these rights, we have forbid you of depriving anyone else of these rights. For example, if you distribute copies of that act, you must give the recipients all the rights that you have. You must make sure that they too receive or can get the source code, and you must tell them their rights. Also, uh, for our own protection, we must make certain that everyone finds out that there is no warranty for NetHack if NetHack is modified 
by someone else and passed on. We want its recipients to know that we have uh, what they have is not what we distributed. Therefore, uh, Mike Stevenson and other holders of the Net Hack copyrights makes the following terms, which say what you must do to be allowed to distribute it. Uh, so many options. So, NetHack Legacy seems like they might be in violation. Can we think of it? Too soon. Let's start early. Uh, copying policies. You may copy and distribute verbatim copies of the source code as you receive it. You may modify your copies. Uh, I'm skipping around here. Um, let's see. You may charge a distribution fee for a physical act of transferring a copy. And you may at your option offer warranty and your, uh, protection in exchange for no fee. Um, Let's see. Stated plainly, you are permitted to modify NetHack or otherwise use parts of NetWork provided you comply with the specifications. License. Um, I wonder. I'm trying to see if there's anything here that says anything about actually selling it. I think they probably are just speaking here off the top of my head and looking over the license. I think they're probably in violation of this license. I don't think that, that you're permitted to uh, to sell a copy of the game. I don't think that I think if if you're trying to say free you you have to say free as in not charging as much as free as in open source I don't think you can say uh, free as in as in uh, open source but you still have to pay It doesn't really state it straight out, but it, it is definitely intended here. When they say they want, uh, they want it in free programs. They do say uh, you can change NetHack or use pieces of it in new free programs, and that you can do these things, and that you know you can do these things. Uh, free programs, not for sale programs so it sounds like NetHack Legacy is violating the license and the copyright so I wouldn't be surprised if that gets taken down if anybody cares that that is the big if so. Alright, moving on, that was way too long, and I really don't have time for all this goofing around. Uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake is getting an official typewriter themed keyboard. Uh, this typewriter themed uh, keyboard does not look particularly like the typewriters that I recognize from Resident Evil, would recognize from Resident Evil 4. Um, it's going for about $675, which is really, really expensive. Uh, if 
these keyboards didn't have the Umbrella Corporation on them and were just keyboards with round typewriter keys. Uh, so the buttons are are bigger and the rounder. I could see somebody with with big fat fingers or some kind of disability uh, saying, "Let's, uh, I'd like this keyboard just for for that reason alone." My eyes are open. Like, yeah, that would make some sense. Yeah, but I, I doubt very many people will buy this. Of course, this is a standard Japanese thing too, is ripping off your customers. This is uh, also completely antithetical to what Capcom has been saying. Like Capcom has been saying we want better quality games and we, we, we want to focus on making good games. The last thing you do if you're focusing on good games is released in Japan only a $675 uh, keyboard accessory. Let's see. I hope he doesn't move forward. I play too many cards. I need to kill something. So yeah, that that's a that's a issue. Your gamer has an article, a Q and A, favorite in-game items, uh, which I imagine they're just questioning their own people. So this this really is a weird non-article uh, because it's. Your gamer asking your gamer staff to fill out a survey uh, and make their own content. So there's really nothing to talk about there. I, I've got to get rid of a couple of these. This one, and this one, and um. for damage. Play this. And then do this. I don't think I can do anything else. We've got a game called Hectic on Steam, which is not the Hectic that you would remember from the 90s. It is instead a Low, low polygon unturned asset flip for a special shooter game. So no interest there. Twenty percent off for three dollars and ninety nine cents. And we've got another sex game called Hentai Hunter, which is just a slide puzzle game. Um, at the very least. Um, in the screenshots, there are black bars that say censored, and the black bars are going over the length of the slide puzzles pieces, so I assume they're only censored in the um, so many options. Hmm. Let's see. I doubt it actually is censored in the game. It's 35% off for 64 cents. Uh, more and more, we're gonna see this where there's just people assumedly stealing the content of other people. Like, I don't think they, they have a license or right to. I gotta kill something here. Oops. I screwed up, I screwed up. Hmm. I almost K 
killed everything on the field there. Um, gotta pay attention. The last thing I want to do is play more of these. Next game we have on Steam is called Tetris Escape. It's a platforming puzzle game where you play as blocks. Let me see what it really looks like. Then I'm looking at a trailer. Okay, so it's basically Tetris blocks that it looks like you're, you're placing them to help a, a live block make their way. So it's kind of like Lemmings and Tetris combined. Not a terrible thought. And it's done in a 3D way that where it looks a little bit better than a cell phone game. But it, it certainly has all of the feeling of a um, so of a cell options. phone game. Um, just a very simplistic puzzle game. Three of those. And thank you. This. And attack. No. Trust okay. me. Attack. This is okay. I don't think I want to kill my guy. Go ahead and kill that guy. And I'm just hoping he doesn't do a group attack. So what's the price for Tetris Escape? 20% off for $3.99. It's 21 Steam achievements, which doesn't seem too bad or too high. So seven hours worth of content. Yeah, there's three stars in this every level to collect. So I'm I'm looking for a reason to not which was this. It's from a developer who hasn't made anything. It's from a publisher who uh, was the same publisher that published Super Destroy Not DX, which was a spoof. Uh, or clone of as not asteroids, but uh, an old arcade game. If I can remember what the so name of it is. Hmm. Let's see. Do this. Hmm. Let's. Oh, I can just win. Good. I guess I'll keep Tetris Escape on my wish list. There's... Keep an eye on it. Next game we have on Steam is called Choice of Magics. It's a text-based game, and text-based games really need to be better filtered or limited in some way. I Honestly... If you're gonna get rid of anything, text best games might be one to get rid of uh, because they're just so deceptively weird. Um, but I also understand why you wouldn't. All right, so we're done now with the European account. Let's switch over to the Asian account. And it seems like it's happening all a little fast today. Hmm. Yeah, we, we've only been about 45 minutes in this recording. Choice of Magics is 30% off for $4.89. For that price in particular, I could never just justify this. Uh, I guess, to be fair, if I was going to make a video game and I was just going to try and write it because I couldn't, couldn't animate anything, a text-based game would be exactly what I would do also. So let's re-roll this. We want as much gold as possible. And we're just going to play Mage. We don't need to do the Talon Brawl anymore. Thank goodness. So 
standard mage deck which I assume is this freeze mage and not this elemental these elemental and overlord decks actually and just to, to quickly make them obvious that they are things I made I'm going to convert this to wild and save and convert this to wild and that's just going to be my new policy now is keep the decks I build to do daily quests specifically in in wild and then play standard with the HS replay decks to try and win next game we have on steam is called terrace tech it seems to be an open world build your car or vehicle the um, racing game we've seen several of these I see no reason why terror tech would would be any more successful than any of the others um, it looks fine Jaina certainly but Jaina. a crafting and car so design mechanic to then run around and it seems like you explore and you harvest resources to build more parts in fact this game is almost certainly a complete ripoff of a game I previously seen unless Terra Tech is the game I'm thinking about because I've definitely seen these designs before and this was like a YouTube popular thing for an extremely brief second um, but then people weren't super interested in it and see Terra Tech is version 1.0 so this might be the game um, it's rated very positive 83% of 3831 user reviews in the last 30 days so people do like it and I guess I should just bow to the crowd it is a massive $24.99 with no discount but I'm gonna bow to the crowd on this one and, and just bow to public opinion and put this on my wish list and keep an eye on it but I it feels like a a new Kerbal Space Program type game where people are going to get into it uh, because it's on Twitch and YouTube for for a little bit but then mm. when people start looking at it and trying to play it they, they, they find out it's not that fun uh, next game we have on Steam is called Astro Viking it says it's a bullet hell female protagonist game it looks like it's a top down game where you're shooting laser beams with your fists and uh, not a spaceship and there's an incredibly big skill tree uh, and it seems to be maybe boss wave type games so like it's like Robotron, uh, just you're in a square area, the graphics aren't terrible, they're not particularly great though and some of it looks like distracting background stuff. It's 15% off for $2.54, I think you probably could do better. Uh, I think also that Robotron has that nostalgia where this doesn't. So yeah. Why it's called Astro Viking, I don't know. That seems like a crazy just made up name. It's Astro Viking and then a bunch of Japanese symbols. It's only in English. Uh, the character on the thumbnail looks like she might be a Viking of some sort. But I don't. It, the gra graphics aren't very good. It's moving on. Move on. Move on. Move on. We, I'm gonna have to get better and better at just moving faster. Uh, Tech Raptor has a review for Tiny Hands Adventure, a T-Rex and his shortcomings. Uh, I haven't heard of this game, Tiny Hands Adventure. Um, so it seems like it is a 
maybe side scroller 2d side scroller game with an open world section um, it's it seems almost like a cell phone game let's see They give it a 5.5 out of 10, so an average game. And I don't believe Tech Raptor is inherently Reality. more Reality. accurate uh, with their reviews. So 5.5 probably is a pretty bad. Uh, the summary here is Tiny Hands Adventure practically mimics the Crash Bandicoot for Androids, but instead of playing as Bandicoot, you take control of an adorable and young T-Rex. Uh, though Bordy's journey is better to better his life with enhanced arms is quite touching as some stages show originality. The awkward controls make the experience more frustrating and entertaining. Okay, so it's a wonky game not worth playing. But at the very least, uh, I will say Tech Raptor is covering a game I hadn't heard of, and I don't know when it came out. Let's see. Uh, uh, the link they just sent me to when I clicked on the link is a completely different game. Hmm. There you go. Uh, it came out August 10th. It has got three user reviews. Hmm. So I must have it open on another tab. Need to change how that works. Okay. Then, yes, August 10th came out a game called Gallery 1. It doesn't look great. I need to remember what I'm doing. Actually, I screwed up already, didn't I? I played my duplicate card. Uh, let's see, Gallery 1 is... Create true art by rolling your paintball all over an outdated masterpiece. So... It, it is just a physics ball rolling over a background of of real art I'm just scribbling over it and it's a third party account required it's 15 percent off for two dollars and 54 cents i think this is a new attack vector on steam the third party accounts and third party licenses i think steam needs to do a much better job at um, I wonder deciding who deserves and who needs that third party account access and versus who is just trying to get it get people's uh, emails to sell and who's trying to do something nefarious with it I think you probably need to be a big publisher to, to require that Moving on, we have a game called Library. It says, Library is a cute game about hanging out and throwing stuff in your, at your new friend's Reality. explorer. A cute library in first person to enjoy the friends and rooms that you come across. So this, I don't, I don't know if this is supposed to be a kid's game or if it's just drawn like a kid's game. It's a unique art style because it's thick black inked, solid, bright colored pastel characters in kind of like just really poorly drawn squiggle vision. Uh, and you're, you're just seeing two hands of the main character and it seems like you can pick up books and talk to people. This, this feels almost like it's for a preschooler kid, but this might be not really for anybody. Hmm. Might just be a random thing. But hardly could I call this an asset flip. There, there, there's 
effort was put into animating this. It's a dollar and ninety-nine cents. Let's see what the features say. Running around a small library and exploring, happy, colorful artwork, throwing books at people, eight achievements, including includes morning post, don't take long to play, a super tasty soundtrack. This seems like this is just a random collection of things. It's English only, full audio, it says. Hmm. Let's see. It says that one of the reviews say there are no game mechanics to speak of. Hmm. And this is the first game from this developer. Again. Is too full. My hand is too full. Yeah, so it's library's the first game they've ever developed. I'm just gonna skip it. <laughs> I'm not feeling generous enough to to wish list a game that has no game mechanics and while it does have a slightly unique art style, it's not enough. Uh, next game we have on Steam is called Fizzle Fearless Sharks. It seems like it is a puzzle game of some sort. Um, this power is it's, ecstasy. I guess what you're doing is you have pieces on a grid to the left, and you need to knock out all the com the corresponding pieces on the right, so that they would mixed together so this is kind of just a puzzle game with any number of you know, pictures it has one steam achievement so it's probably an achievement hunter game designed to get 100% achievements uh, it's 40% off for a dollar and 79 cents like one easy steam achievement is is definitely going to be where achievement hunters start going uh, yeah, dollar seventy nine with forty percent off. It's totally not worth it, and I guess I'm gonna see a lot more games like this. Okay, this, be just like you. this, and Woven. this. Attack here. Let's see. Next game we have on Steam is called Captain the Runner. It's a casual runner. The graphics don't look good. They look like a 90s game. It's kind of funny. As I can say a game looks like an Atari game. I can say a game looks like an NES game. I can say a game looks like an 80s game uh, in general. Although, I wouldn't say 80s game. I would say probably like Atari, NES, Sega uh, Sega CD type things, full motion video, uh, that there are better descriptions than just saying 80s. But if I say 90s, it's, I'm talking like a 90s PC game drawn in MS Paint. Uh, Captain the Runner is 40% off for 59 cents, that's not worth it. Let's move on. This power is Let's see. Gameindustry.biz as an article, Robot Cash names Laura Navaxster, Chief Marketing Officer. Uh, I don't know Robot Cash. Uh, let's see. She ha worked 15 years previously for Sony Online Entertainment. And uh, then she worked for Daybreak which apparently Sony Online Entertainment got named Daybreak hmm. where she had been the chief publishing officer so it seems like more people are leaving Sony um, that is interesting okay so so the former chief 
chief publishing officer at Daybreak signs on with a blockchain based digital storefront is the subtitle to this article I didn't read that part I should have uh, so robot cash is this weird blockchain based digital storefront which I am not 100% sure how they use blockchain so if they're using it to make money or if they're just using it to verify whether people should have copies of, to, of a specific uh, game or if they're just using it to reduce the bandwidth to install games uh, there's about three different ways off the top of my head you could use blockchain uh, people are trying to use blockchain to replace YouTube uh, there's a site called DTube uh, that not too many people are going to and I think it what failed to uh, to I was keeping an eye on it for a short time and then I, I think there's just uh, not enough people running the servers in the background even though it was using blockchain let's see yeah, that article doesn't mean anything Here's a Gamma Sutra article that I don't think matters. It's talking about aesthetics in mm. uh, in games, like making them look better. Let the pain speak uh, to me. And certainly, the there are some instances me. where you could definitely change things and make them look better and, and make it so well. This is too in-depth of an artistic uh, article though. Not something I could really get across by talking about it and it's just going on and on. This is a full-on paper instead of the usual Game of Sutra articles that are barely three sentences. Of course, Game of Sutra is just a site where people um, post instead of having their own independent blogs hmm. let's see draw a secret from your deck play this probably should have played that hope I don't have a counter spell that would be the problem, biggest issue. All right, yeah, that article's too long. PC Gamer has an article though. Shadow of the Tomb Raider's best new feature is its custom difficulty settings. We played the first hours with the hardest puzzle and platforming possible. Um, so it seems like what they have is in the puzzle modes they have a hard and normal and an easy system and what the difference is is in hard mode visually there's no change so you are seeing a uh, instance of you're you're seeing an instance of like in this example a place where a rope would be attached on one end and a place where a rope would be attached on the other end and one point has a wheel that spins and that spin uh, that spinning rope pulls the two pieces closer together and activates something in normal it's very dark it's hard to see at all uh, well, in hard, it's very dark and, and, and difficult to see. In normal, it's highlighted with a yellowish highlight, which I imagine only appears as you approach the idea, the thing. And in easy mode, the one end of it is the yellowish highlight, and the, the wheel part is in a blue highlight. 
So there's been like three different overlays uh, that they're putting on. This is probably a good thing for Tomb Raider though because it, it means that they can take steps to actually mandating puzzles. Whereas in the previous two Tomb Raider games there's barely been... Uh, if you didn't want to do the puzzles at all in Rise of Tomb Raider, I don't think you need you had to do I any of them. The or maybe you, there was a minimum amount of them that you had to do, but it was not a lot. So now they can say, yes, you have to do the puzzles, but we'll make them super easy. Uh, let's see. Apparently, there's going to be jump scares in this third game, which And there's going to be swimming sections where you have to get oxygen from pockets of of oxygen. Let's see. What to do? Is there trouble? What to do? Might as well play this. I don't know. Is there trouble? Hmm. See, if I had that mecha thing card right now and played it, I could. I could win. Uh, although maybe I couldn't. Um, it's not mentioned in this PC Gamer article, but they also have already talked about how there's an easy, uh, a hard, normal, and easy version of depicting where you platform and where you can move. Uh, this is interesting ideas. It's better than putting in the, uh, let's see, I'm, I'll play this card and then I'll just concede. It, it's better than putting in ideas for multiplayer. I, I heard from a podcast, somebody, if somebody's related to the mainstream video game media, but I guess that doesn't really matter. I heard that the the DLC extra stuff that I didn't even care to do in Rise of the Tomb Raider actually paid off rather well as far as giving backstory to Laura Croft and that it should have been in the main game. Uh, inherently, I guess that's just the fault of Square Enix. Like, or, like if, if they had, or, or Crystal Dynamics, um, if they had made that mandatory content that we played at the beginning of the game or in the middle of the game at, at, during the break section, uh, then I would have had to play it and I would have experienced it. But by the time I was done with Laura Croft, by the time I had seen the credits, I was so done with it that I, I didn't want to play any of that extra stuff. And it seemed like it was all unimportant stuff. Moving on, yeah. Frankly, I think I'm probably a little still done with Laura Croft, and I'm not sure I'm going to get around to... This is a waste of time. He's, he's just not going to play any characters. Done. He, he's just going to let me take damage. Uh, he's going to play it safe. Boy, rank 22, you can have a little bit more fun than that. Although, maybe not. Maybe the, he... He's so desperate to get out of rank 22. Regardless, I accomplished my two goals. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get back to Tomb Raider. Uh, I shouldn't have started a new game. We're, we're already 10 minutes over. We have a game on Steam called Dragonfly Chronicles. It says it's a 2D action adventure game. Uh, it seems like it's an attempt in an actual game, uh, but the animation style just doesn't look. It, it, it doesn't look good enough. Like, the, the main character looks like a blob of red, and 
the enemies look like blobs of red and blue and the walls have half of the amount of detail that I would like them to have in them but not enough uh, they want five dollars no eight dollars and ninety nine cents for dragonfly chronicles and then the thumbnail makes it almost look like it's an anime uh, but it, it isn't Let's see what languages is it in English only in the light's name so yeah close that we have an RPG maker looking game called Sakura and the crit the mock game uh, so yeah they want a dollar 99 with no discount for this RPG maker game no thank you I don't think they can survive that. Uh, next game we have is called Trumpy Wall, which is a cheap clone of uh, like a line rider game, uh, where you one button game where you're screw uh, going back and forth, uh, left or right every time you tap a button. Uh, we saw a skiing game like this that I, I looked at. I think I got one for free and covered it last November. Uh, but yeah, right now I don't think so. First of all, because you're you're just making a meme uh, game, basically. Job done. There we go. So I've got copy and copy, and I just would want the other sorcerer's apprentice. Yeah, this is just a new skin on an old game, probably a stolen game. They want three dollars and ninety-nine cents for it. Let's see. I think anything with Trump in the name needs to be looked at by Steam before they approve it. The other three games that this developer has made are all suspicious looking in the first place. Uh, so this is probably a straight up trolling developer. Uh, now I'm not saying that you can't make a game with Trump in it. You, you can't cover that content if you want to I'm saying if you do it it has to be done, done in a quality way whether you want to make a quality uh, case against Trump or a quality That's case right. for Trump or whatever or just have him as an incidental character uh, that's fine but if it is the main reason the number one reason you're even making the game that is uh, that is a problem An incredible discovery. Hmm. let's see Gamma Sutra has a video how audio and movement were synced in Sunset Overdrive. I don't think that really matters any, though, because Sunset Overdrive, I don't believe, succeeded. I believe it's a total failure thing. This is a GDC conference, and Gamma Sutra and GDC are owned by the same company. Uh, we've got a game on Steam called Imperialism, Fate of India. Uh, says it's a early access indie strategy, uh, grand strategy tag. That's a new one to me. Right. So, 
freeze the minion and do one damage to him. And start killing things. Hmm, this looks like it is a risk game of sorts. Uh, not is it, is it risk that I'm thinking about? I guess it is. What what's the other game I was thinking about then? It's a game with a map of India and there's a bunch of flags and I imagine you put points and abilities into different characteristics to try to win other parts. Imperialism Fate of India is 30% off for $5.59. I think specifically focusing on India makes no do? sense to a Westerner. It's an English-Russian game as far as the language is, so... That also makes very little sense. Deal two damage to everything and free. Then in the turn. Who dares summon me? So yeah, didn't win. I think probably the slight changes in my um, the slight changes in my development. All right, so we're 18 minutes over, and here's here's the deal. I guess we're gonna just have to go another hour. I I only really need to play two more spells. Yes, but I've got tons of news. So this will be a weird thing where we're just going to go back to the America's account after we get this daily quest done and just play some regular old Hearthstone just trying to win. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me even further, I'm asking people to friend me on Steam and gift me a game. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.